Right, you're about to hear and see um, one of the weirdest experience, I've got to share it with you, the weirdest experience I've ever had at CEX ever. It was absolutely bizarre. Um, I'm over in Braintree, it's about an hour away from where I live, so Braintree's in Essex. Um, we stayed overnight with my missus in the travel lodge, because it was only like 40 quid a room, and there was a run I wanted to do in the area in Great Dunmo, if anyone's from Essex and knows the area. Um, so I thought if I'd see if there's any CEX around, so I can do another episode of... Um, Sega Game Gear UK Tour, I think it's episode four or five. I think it's the fifth one. I might be wrong. Um, and there was some Game Gear. So you're going to see some Game Gear games. I picked a few up, a few loose carts, which is brilliant. On the way there, I popped some charity shops. And there's about six charity shops within a five-minute walk. Like, really, really good if you live in this area. Um, and there were some really good deals around. Like, there was loads of comics. I put some footage and clips up. There was old VHS tapes of, like, Thunderbirds. There was Game Conic comics. There was, like, a sign I saw... Um, saying PS4 games a pound. Obviously, there was no stock, but like, how good's that? If you went in there, just any game for PS4, like, it's not even that old for a pound. Like, that's a brilliant deal. Like, <laughs> really good. You can probably just take them or cash them straight to CEX. Um, so, yeah, I found loads of cool stuff just looking around in charity shops. I only made one purchase before I headed to the CEX. Um, and the weird, <laughs> a very good purchase. I found the Nintendo 64 mouse mat, which I've never seen before in very good condition. Granted, it cost me eight pounds. But looking on eBay, there was only one that's up there, you know, original from 96 or 97 when this come out. And it sold for like, I'll put it up like 15, 20 quid. And I thought that's just cool to have. I might be able to use it to swap it with a mad N64 fan, but I'll keep it for now. But you don't come across things like that. I saw it in the glass. I was like, what's that? I was like, excuse me, love, can I have a look at it? Absolutely bizarre. Um, but now I'm going to head over to CEX. So I'm going to show a few little clips. I'll talk over it anyway. And some footage I got. Um, first of all, when I went in there, I couldn't see any Sega Game Gear um, at all. Went around the shop. It was the most bizarre laid out shop. They're really like blase and relaxed. Like upstairs where like there's DVDs. There's like a copy of like Metal Gear Solid on a PS1. The retro was just mixed in with a the modern. There was a 3DS cabinet which had no 3DS in. It was all Nintendo DS. Everything was just jumbled, mumbled around. It was mental. It was just like disorganized chaos. But it was a cool CEX. They had like a seating area, like to test and play games. Um, it, like, it felt like sort of like a bit like a games room, just the way everything was laid out. There was an upstairs to it, which had more games upstairs. They had the normal stuff behind the cabinets, you know, downstairs and by the shop window. Um, but yeah, I walked around. You'll see some footage and stuff anyway um, of what I found in the shop. And I was like, God, I was like, oh, no game gear. I thought, I'd just ask. He goes, yeah, there might be some in the drawer. And he checked it out. He went, yeah, there's four games. And he was like, I'll open up a drawer. And he's opened up a drawer and goes, yeah, have a look. And he's let me rummage. It was like being the boot sale or back of a charity shop. You know when you build a relationship up with someone in a charity shop and they just let you have a look out back, like they get that trust. And there's loads of like Atari links. There was like Zelda loose carts. There was things like rare things, which they probably can't sell, like Genesis carts. There was a lot of value in there. Like if I was a knob, I could have had them over. But I'm not like that. It was just really refreshing. They just trusted me to go through. I didn't want to film too much and think like make myself look suspicious or they think I'm taking a piss it's really kind of them just let me look through and it was chaos in this drawer and I was just running through this drawer all these different consoles and amiibos and loads of rare Game Boy Colour stuff N64 snares there was even things like Famicom things they've obviously brought by accident yeah, and can't sell um, and I managed to find three loose carts out of the four couldn't find the four but you know I'm going to shut up stop waffling I'll show you some footage and then we'll head back to the games room to recap and I'll show you the games and pick ups see you soon Thanks, 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 Thanks,
Do you want me to have a ride for free see if I can That's alright, I'll have a look, that's that. fine, yeah. Cheers. Thanks. So here's my temporary Sega corner, which I've kind of just made. How cool is this little Game Gear stand? If you type in, um, well, Game Gear stand in Etsy, this little thing comes up. Only fits 12 cartridges. It's about £20. Pretty decent, though. Um, let me know what you guys have got stored. Anyone collecting Sega Game Gear? Assuming you are. I have a good collection of it if you're watching this video and series. But, yeah, be interested to know if there's any better solutions of what to do with cartridges other than putting them in a bloody shoebox. Um, but yeah, so let's have a little look. So the games we've got, I'll show you some footage of each game. So the three new additions picked up was Sonic Hedgehog 2. Of course, what an absolute game to get. It plays really, really well. Let's dive into this one first. I'll put a footage clip up so you can see how well it might look from this footage clip a little bit like the frame rate's a bit low but obviously it's just a clip um, from the internet not my gameplay clip i'm just because i was just tried it out on the actual my own original sega game gear which isn't modded at all and obviously that footage would be terrible to put in a video but it plays a lot better than this video um plays out it's really really good game um, and as you can see here on the price on the right all these receipts um sorry all these prices the games are so cheap look 350 that was olympic gold's two pound Woody Pop's £3. So Woody Pop, to be honest, you're not a game I was excited about. This game is basically a breakout game, as you can see from the footage now. Um, really good game where you can sort of get different abilities and your little paddle of Woody gets bigger. Um, you get like fire attributes. Um, the person you're seeing playing must be playing the expert mode for sort of avoiding things like the plague. Um, these little skulls and stuff. But yeah, the game is really good. It's really good power-ups. It's got a save screen, so it will save the memory of your high score. So it's pretty good for a quick like five minutes blast and see if you can improve your score, that sort of thing. So yeah, really good game. Um, and then this one actually really surprised me. As you may know, Hyper Sports 84, track and field, like my two favourite arcade games. Um, Olympic Gold, I wasn't sure. I love all these sort of button bashing games, but on a handheld, it's so difficult. But the way the Game Gear is... You can sort of hold it. Obviously, I'm holding the phone now, trying to film it. But you can hold. You're able to sort of alternate the buttons. It's fine. Like it's not like you've got to hold the screen one way. You can play the Game Gear as normal. And uh, this game's actually like two bucks. Such a cheap game. I thought it'd be trash. And out of the three games, I was actually playing this the most. So put some footage on the screen now. Um, you can see we've got like. Well, the archery is absolutely fantastic. Really good event. Um, yeah, really, really good that is. I always like the archery, even on like Mario and Sonic at the Olympics. Um, the sprint's good. The hurdle's a good laugh. Uh, what else we got? We've got the hammer throw. Um, I wasn't very good at the pole vault. But yeah, there's lots of things on there. There's even swimming. Um, there's some like diving, I mean. There's some really, really good sports on there. Um, and that is actually a really good game. So yeah, I mean, Olympic gold. I'm really happy with that. So there's three new additions. Um, and the fact that I've picked up these, which I probably wouldn't have bothered. Well, I had the CX credit, and I've still got, like, do you know what I mean? It barely touches the sides, so it's left me with still, like, another 60 quid, and I've still got stuff to trade in, so absolutely over the moon with that. So let me know if you've played any of these games. Um, and then thanks to everyone who's private messaged me, telling me um, what Game Gear games and showing me pictures of stuff that they've got, you know, from their shop, so I can go and check those out. So there's plenty of episodes coming. Let me know, guys, what you think of this episode. Please subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. And uh, please leave a comment and I will try to respond to everyone. But yeah, I'll see you guys soon for another video. Cheers. Before I sign this video off, I just want to say a big shout out and thank you to the staff at Braintree CEX. All the three staff members there are so lovely, so helpful. So yeah, I just wanted to, before I end this video, just say thank you. Cheers. Early access from 11 o'clock, but I got here at 10. Yay! Everything has to be checked and double-checked in this job, including me. If I get hungry between meals, I'm not at my best. Marathon's got what it takes to satisfy me. Ooh, you know it. Oh, I need a drink. Packed with peanuts, Marathon really satisfies.